Hello agents and welcome to another daily episode of Target of Loot Today, your daily farming guide for Saturday, January 2nd. I'm Shadow Gaming, and if you enjoy this video, consider pressing the subscribe and like buttons below, and remember to comment below as well if you have any questions, otherwise let's get this video started. Alright agents, so starting off with the Dark Zones and Vendor Reset Highlights, which are in that big bottom left overlay right there. What I would recommend for the next couple days for the Vendor's Reset is to pick up the Rock and Roll Shotgun and DZ West for 152 DZ resources, and the Gift Backpack with Perfect Vigilance. Over there in the DZ South Vendor, it's rolled with 11.7% weapon damage, 9.8% crit hit damage, and 6.8% skill damage. I would definitely reroll that skill damage to crit hit chance or weapon handling, otherwise let's move on to the actual Dark Zone targeted loot. Alright guys, starting off with Dark Zone West, we got Future Initiative. It's a great healer gear set and it rolls with a skill tier so you can farm for it in the Dark Zones. But the chest and backpack are Iron Horse Raid exclusive. Other than that, what I would do is get an Alp Summit chest piece or backpack with Safeguard on the backpack and Empathetic Resolve on the chest piece. Now over in DZ South, we got Rigor. That's something else you can farm for in the Dark Zone because it rolls with a skill tier, but I don't have a build suggestion for you. I just know that it has instant cooldowns. It's great for, you know, endless seeker mines and good builds like that. So you could definitely grab something up in DZ South today if you'd like. And then of course, Golong Gear in DZ East. The only named Golong Gear piece is the Anarchist Cookbook with Perfect Wicked Backpack, which can drop in the light zone as well. All right, agents, over here on the north side, Target Alu highlights. Starting off with the Invader missions, we got Federal Emergency Bunker, DCD HQ, Potomac Event Center, Roosevelt Island, and Tidal Basin Stronghold. Next up at Camp White Oak, we got Overlord, so you could farm for the Fox's pair of knee pads with 8% damage targets out of cover. I think every agent should have a pair of these knee pads. And then of course, Wyvern Wear of the Ballpark for an extra 10% damage piece. Definitely want to grab that. Chest piece with Kinetic Momentum or Glass Cannon for your skill damage build. And then over here, we got Submachine Guns at the Amusement Park. So three Exotics, Lady Death, Chatterbox, and Backfire. I recommend all three. They're very good. But remember that the Dark Winter and the Apartment are Dark Zone exclusives. You cannot farm for them outside of the Dark Zone, but there are several ways to get them except for just farming the Dark Zone, just un kind of unreliable ways that are in the bottom left overlay. And really that's it, skill attachments at Many National Zoo. I don't ever recommend farming for those. Kenley College is open for another two days if anyone's actually going there. And then the Summit, you pick your own targeted loot. So let's go check out what we got on the West Side. Alright agents, West Side Target Alu highlights, starting off with gear sets, and there's quite a few of them, so I'll only mention the ones I really recommend. So Aces and Aids is definitely one I recommend at Title Based and Stronghold. This is a great headshot damage gear set. I mix three pieces of Aces and Aids, two pieces of Aralta Holding, one being a backpack with Vigilance or Composure, and the Chain Killer chest piece, and I run that with the Mantis. You can also run it with a Nemesis, Ekim's Long Stick, or the White Death. And then of course Hunter's Fury at DARPA Research Labs. This one's kind of difficult to farm for because you always want a good crit hit chance or crit hit damage roll on the second attribute and 170k armor on the main core because you know I think Hunter's Fury runs best with three armor cores and four red. And then of course I'll put my favorite Hunter's Fury build in the top right card now. That's four pieces Hunter's Fury, Death Grip Gloves, and then of course the Memento Backpack or you can switch up and throw a Sokolov chest piece on there with Intimidate or Obliterate. Both of those builds are incredibly good. Strikers over here at Lincoln Memorial. I only recommend three pieces just for the rate of fire and weapon handling. I never recommend any more than three pieces and really just for the Merciless. And then ongoing directive at Foggy Bottom. Now there's two good ongoing directive builds that are worth running in this title update 12 time. And that's going to be four pieces ongoing directive, the Vile Mask and the Badger Tough Backpack with Creeping Death. That one's probably the best one. And then the second best would be the Ridgeway's Pride, four pieces of ongoing directive. And then of course the Anarchist Cookbook with Perfect Wicked or a backpack with Wicked on it. For regular targeted loot, we do have Honey U over here at Bank HQ. This is where you can find that Force Multiplier backpack with Perfect Combined Arms, giving you 30% skill damage every three seconds, and it's the alternative to tech support. Next up, knee pads at Downtown West. So of course, two exotic knee pads, Ninja Bike Messenger and Sawyer's knee pads. Both of them are kind of DPS exotic knee pads. But of course, you know, run and gun for Ninja Bike, and then for Sawyer's, it's the opposite. You're sitting still, so more for like a sniper rifle build. Then we got Douglas and Harding at DCD. You could find the Punch Drunk Mask to 20% headshot damage baked right into it. That's always worth it for an all high end headshot damage build. And then the last three I'll mention is Mass over here at Potomac Event Center. You got two exotic masks, Coyotes and Vile Mask, both of which are definitely worth farming for. 
While I don't normally use the Vile Mask too much, it's for status effects and skill damage, and the Coyote's Mask is almost mandatory for any DPS build, especially if you're running in groups, it gives you so much crit hit chance and crit hit damage. And then Light Machine Guns at Roosevelt Island today, two exotic LMGs, Bullet King and Pestilence. Bullet King, you never have to reload, and the Pestilence, you can get that damage tick to over a million. And then the bottom left overlay, there's four named LMGs you can get in this game. I prefer the, you know, Carnage with Perfect Sadist and the new Reliable, Perfectly Optimized. And then lastly, Badger Tough at the Pentagon. You can find the Zero F's chest piece with Perfect Unbreakable. It's great for a DPS hybrid, and you're going to need it for the first part of the project for Ridgeway's Pride to donate. So if you haven't done that yet, I would keep one around that's trash that you can donate. All right, guys, let's move on over to the east side now. All right, Agents Eastside highlights starting off with gear sets. We got True Patriot at Viewpoint Museum. I will put my True Patriot build in the top right card now. That's four pieces of True Patriot, the Memento Backpack, and a circle of chess piece with Intimidate. I run that with the Lady Death or the Scorpio or the Mop or the Dark Winter. It's an SMG and shotgun damage build. But of course, it can do solo, group, heroic, legendary content because you can tank so much damage. You can also switch it up and add the Chameleon and run a Fenris chest piece as well with Intimidate, so I'd recommend either or. Hardwire is pretty much useless now in my opinion, same with Tip of the Spear. Eclipse Protocol, my favorite fire damage build, includes the Eclipse Protocol set, and that'll be in the top right title card as well. Four pieces of Eclipse Protocol, the Imperial Dynasty holster, and a Golong gear piece for the extra status effects. And then moving on to normal target alu, we got gloves at Capital Building Stronghold. It's not in beta this week, but you can still get the BTSU data gloves that grants overcharge to any, you know, anyone that's over skill tier six, including yourself, just by destroying your hive. Next up, we got backpacks at Space Administration HQ. You could farm the two exotic backpacks in this game, the Memento, which is probably the best exotic gear piece in my opinion. And then of course, the Acosta's Go Bag, which grants overcharge like uh, the BTSU gloves and all sorts of other stuff with the one in the hand, two in the bag talent. And then Marksman Rifles at Jefferson Plaza. Of course, you got the Mantis and the Nemesis. Those are the two exotics, but the Nemesis is a quest only exotic. So you have to get the Puck's blueprint from Grand Washington Hotel first and then craft it at the White House before you can, you know, get it. It joins the general target of loot pool. Otherwise, the two named MMRs I recommend is Ekim's Longstick with Perfect Ranger and the White Death. And I recommend rolling Boomerang, Ranger, or Rifleman on it. I roll the holding over here at American History Museum. Great for any headshot damage build, especially paired with Chain Killer. Of course, you always want to roll this with weapon damage, weapon handling, and headshot damage because credit chance and credit damage do not matter on a headshot damage build. And if you get a backpack, you want composure or vigilance. Gear system mods at Jefferson Trade Center. If you want to run that on heroic today, you can try to find some god rolled mods like 6% crit hit chance, which I'm still looking for. And then Sokolo Concern at District Union Arena. Definitely worth getting if for any SMG build. You can run one or all three, depending on if you're running Hunter's Fury or not. And really, that's about it that I'm going to recommend on the east side. Let's go check out now what we got on the New York City map. All right, agents, finally, last but not least, we got New York City target of Lou highlights and no gear sets, thank God. So we got all the good stuff over here today. So first off, we got Providence Defense at Wall Street. You can farm for the Sacrifice of Perfect Glass Cannon, amplifying all damage you deal by 30%, but all incoming damage by 60. Definitely worth running on any skill damage build or DPS build if you like Glass Cannon. Next up, Walker Harrison Co. over here at the Financial District area. You could farm for the Chain Killer chest piece with Perfect Headhunter, which is almost mandatory on any headshot damage build. Otherwise, I would run Braced. And remember that the Matador with Perfect uh, Adrenaline Rush is a Dark Zone exclusive backpack. Assault Rifles over here at Liberty Island. Two exotic assault rifles outside of the Eagle Baron, and that would be the Chameleon with Adaptive Instincts and the Capacitor with Capacitance. Now first you have to complete five you know, challenges with Summit to get the capacitor, but then after that you can it joins the general target loot pool so you can farm for it. And then of course here's the overlay of the named assault rifles, my favorite being the test subject and the mechanical animal and the burnout. Bellstone Armory at Battery Park, you can farm the everyday carrier perfectly efficient. I had a subscriber tell me that they're using it and it's pretty good, but it might not be working with specialization bonus armor. And then of course remember that the Liquid Engineer with Perfect Bloodsucker is a Dark Zone exclusive backpack, so keep that in mind when farming Bellstone. We got Petrov over here at Pathway Park, you can farm the Contractor's Gloves with 8% damage to armor, any LMG build you want this on, or if you're stacking damage to armor. And then the last couple is holsters at two bridges, of course three exotic holsters, the Waveform which you can get at level 90, a season 4 reward track. 
and is highly worth it for any skill damage build. And then the other two is Dodge City Holster for DPS, pistol, and headshot damage builds. And then the Imperial Dynasty Holster for skill damage and status effects. You can also farm for the Forge Holster, which gives you 50% shield health, so that's a whole extra skill tier with the shield health. And last but not least, Empress at the Tombs 3-piece gives you 10% skill efficiency. So how skill efficiency works is for 10% skill efficiency, that's 10% skill damage, skill haste, skill duration, skill repair, status effects, skill health, everything skill, it gives you 1% or 10% of it. And then of course my favorite skill damage build is going to be in the top right title card. That's three pieces of Empress, two pieces of Hana Yu, the waveform. And then of course you want to roll kinetic momentum on the chest piece, force multiplier backpack, and then the capacitor is the main weapon. Alright agents, well that was the targeted loot for today. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you're watching right now all the way to the end. Thank you, I appreciate that. And remember to subscribe and like and share if you enjoyed my content. It helps me out a lot and it helps you get my videos every day. If you'd like to become a member, you can click the join button below for exclusive perks and extra support. It really helps me out. Otherwise, Shadow Gaming merch and everything else is all in the links in the video description and pinned comments below if you want to check those out. Otherwise, take care agents and be sure to stay tuned for more daily Division 2 content. This is Shadow Gaming signing off. I will see you in the next video. Take care agents.